you join me on an industrial estate in Magor in South Wales. Um, it's the 5th of July. We've had a Labour government for four hours and as far as I can tell, there's been no change because it's still pissing down. So uh, Starmer, pull your finger out and sort out the weather, will you? You promised the world, start delivering. On the subject of delivering, I'm currently delivering this. The Audi e-tron 55 s line now me and this car got a lot in common i'm a normal bloke with a weight problem that's an audi a6 with a weight problem a huge weight problem it weighs two and a half tons it's 250 kilos heavier than the i-pace which was already far too heavy two and a half ton for a car i mean the thing is Look at it. Looks just like an Audi A6 with a weight problem, because that's exactly what it is. It ain't a bad thing, is it? But it weighs two and a half tons. And Audi only made them for two years. And I can see why, because it's too bloody heavy. So uh, there you go. The Audi 55 e-tron S line has a range of 230 miles, which actually, considering this one's four years old, this is a 70 plate one, that's not that bad range wise that's not bad at all um i would have thought it would have gone down a bit from that but that's what it says and so far so good the last one seemed to deliver on it so here's the thing flip the camera around and look inside i've already done one of these before um fairly standard audi cockpit to be honest no different than um the uh, normal cars that they make. Little flippy gear lever, um, but a knob for volume. Volume knob, very important. Nice seats, S-line seats with the uh, stitching in the lever. Very comfy. Not that much room in the back really though, for a car of this size. Very disappointing leg room. But then again, it's a car with a weight problem. So you'd think it'd accommodate fat people. Apparently not. Oh, get in. Light it up. So you can see what it looks like lit up. There you go. It's all right, isn't it? Not too bad. Still got this weird thing that VAG Group insist on putting on dashboards. I don't understand what it is or what it does. It's just a weird bit of cheap faux leather with some stitching in it. Um, so uh, let's take it down the road and see what happens. Right, we are underway. I'm about to join the M4 and make my way back to England. Um, the first thing that you notice is that the acceleration on this is not like most milk floats it's not instant it's almost like it's got turbo lag which is impossible because it doesn't have any turbos to lag but you put your foot down from a standing start and there's a proper hesitation it just doesn't doesn't take off um, from 40 to 60 I'll just demonstrate now because um, I'm about to pull onto the motorway so I can go from 40 to 70 actually. Here we go. Oh, that's all right. That took that long. That's all right, that. Picks up quite well. Um, but here's the thing, and this is the, the crux of the matter. This is a 2020 55 S line um, from new. If you wanted to buy one of these in 2020, you'd have to walk into an Audi dealership and part with just over 75 grand for one of these. And you would have driven out that showroom having spent your 75 grand thinking, what a wise investment. Four years later, you may be regretting that decision because much like the I-Pace last week, um, which had depreciated to the tune of 40 grand um, and about 40% of its value. This thing 
75 grand brand new, you can now buy with 37,000 miles on the clock from Cinch and other dealers are available for 25 grand. That is depreciation of 50,000 pounds in four years. 50 grand in four years. That's phenomenal. That is super depreciation. 66%. I mean, that's eye watering stuff. I mean, luckily, I don't think many people bought these for cash. They were all just lease jobs, they're all company cars and hire cars. But the depreciation on EVs is just unbelievable. It is, it is completely unsustainable, that's for sure. Um, the second hand market, not that there is one to speak of as such, um, but what there is, why the hell would you buy something that's already depreciated by 50 grand, knowing it can only depreciate further? And in a couple of years, bearing in mind this is also an obsolete model now, I'd expect to pick this up for 10. I mean, the batteries will be knackered on it, they'll only have a year left. But uh, nevertheless, what a thing. What an absolute thing. 66%. 50 grand. Oh, yes, I bought myself an Audi uh, Atron 55 S line. Yes, it's an A6 with a weight problem. Oh, yes, it's the future. Paid £75,000 for it. Four years' time, I've just sold my e tron. Imagine if you took it back to the dealer and traded it in. You'd be getting 19 grand for it. There's a point. That's the resale value. That's resale at retail. You ain't even getting 25 for it. You're getting 19. That's 70 odd percent. Ah, oh, it's just mental. Utterly, utterly mental. A 75 grand car in four years' time, when you trade it in, you'll know, you know you're not getting 20 grand back for it. So let's move that depreciation up to about 56 grand. Good luck, everybody. And somehow this is the future. I mean, I know I coined the phrase future my arse. But clearly, future my arse has never been more appropriate than when we're talking about second-hand EVs. Because this, this is mental. It's completely unsustainable as an economic model. So somebody's got to give. In the meantime, everyone that shelled out at the beginning is now out of pocket. To the point where, how do you then go and buy another one? Because a new one of these, are, you know, you'd have to buy the uh, Atron Q5. Boring. Boring people carrier. Which doesn't drive nearly as well. Doesn't look nearly as good. Is boring in any possible way. And will cost you even more money. You're going to need to find... You've lost 50 grand, and now you've got to find another 60 grand on top of your 19 grand to buy a new one. So much for the three year trading that uh, has sustained the new car market so beautifully for the past 50 years. That's gone. It's just mind blowing. Absolutely mind blowing. So, the second hand EV market that doesn't exist really is now not in decline, it's in crisis. I'll be surprised if you don't go to an Audi dealership and see some UN people wearing blue helmets outside, just trying to keep the peace and trying to work their way through this crisis. The Red Cross are probably on their way to Audi in Bristol right now. To set up like a, you know, like a tent outside. St John's are there as well, because you know, you're gonna have to deal with the shock Someone's going to have to be there to do uh, sort out all the owners who are driving their uh, milk floats back going, I think I'll just trade in and uh, get myself a newer model. But hey, no you won't. Some balloon payment that, be like the size of the Hindenburg. So there you have it. Second hand EVs. Bargain really. If you want to, I mean I suppose, 
if you want to throw 25 grand down the drain, that's one hell of a way to do it. Because um, you ain't ever going to get your money back. You, the day you buy this car, it's going to depreciate. And it's going to keep depreciating until it can depreciate no more. And then you're left with, I don't know, some scrap batteries that you can't scrap because scrap yards won't take them because they're a fire risk. Jesus. It's like the worst of all worlds, isn't it? Unbelievable. So there you have it. My conclusion is second-hand EVs are worth even less than brand-new EVs in the grand scheme of things. Um, and they are, as I said from the very outset, crap. Future, my arse.